and welcome to Bunter's Yard. So this is the uh, the assembly guide and the paint guide for the LNER plate layers hut. Now if you've uh, come by this video via the QR code on the pack of the uh, plate layers hut that you've purchased from us, then uh, thank you very much for your purchase. Hope this uh, this video is, is uh, of use to you. If you've uh, come across the video uh, via search recommendation or uh, you're a YouTube follower then um, we uh, we thank you very much for uh, for tuning in and if you want to buy one of these plate layers hut kits uh, the laser cut kit from Bunters Yard that is yeah, this in the description below there is a there is a link to follow to the store so uh, let's uh, make a start now and the parts are all completely cut away from the uh, from the board so there's none of them annoying tabs to sort of nip away at and uh, take bits out and uh, anyway so all nice clean cuts now on this particular part this is the um, this is like the base uh, it goes below the floor so if you see one of these out in the wild um, sort of sitting on uh, earth or so you'd have these little concrete pads and that's what these are for so we're just going to take some of the uh, smoother edges off some of the sharp edges just to make it look like a bit of one concrete now those corner pieces are quite delicate so just take care of those we're going to uh, use uh, rocket glue and super glue to assemble our kit you can use uh, either or or both or um, or even PVA would work just as well but uh, rocket glue is quite nice to use once you get uh, kind of the hang of it I guess uh, it goes off pretty quick but it does give you a, a, a moment or two to, um, to sort of move things around and uh, make some adjustments so each of the sides are made up of two parts apart from the uh, the bit of the window and I'll come back to that in a minute uh, basically you've got the uh, the two mil bit at the back the MDF which is the uh, the slats or the, the slat effect for the wall and then the overlay which uh, which is for the posts and uh, the the support surrounds so we're just going to glue uh, those into place now on the end pieces so the this bit and the door they're exactly the same size um, as the uh, as the slat uh, sort of backing so they fit over there completely uh, um, exact and this one is a little bit different because there's an overlap by about a millimeter each end and that's just the disguise the um, the joints in the wall uh, well that's one of the reasons anyway um, so just take care when you assemble this uh, I would line up the top parts so the little notches in the top they're the bit that you want to um, to line up and just a little bit of rocket glue uh, I just normally t tend to dab it on and then just sort of smooth it along it and uh, yeah just make sure those notches at the top line up the bit that goes in there is quite a tight fit so make sure you get those straight back to the door end so exactly the same as the uh, as the other um, sort of smaller wall at the other end the opposite end it fits exactly so uh, just overlay it and uh, make sure it's nice and smooth all the way around the edge and then just leave it a couple of minutes to dry now for the window it's a little bit different uh, rather than having a single piece of the slat we've got a window sort of uh, cut out and then the window frame which is on the same size um, as that uh, the slat effect and the reason for that being is that if we uh, put the window behind a two mil piece it just looks too far behind uh, and this also gives us an opportunity to paint um, easily as well now you don't have to follow this guide exactly if you want to paint your model uh, your kit once it's completely assembled um, and then sort of you know, cutting around the doors and the windows or, or not even you know bother about having a different color from those you can just assemble this in one go so the next couple of steps you may just want to uh, sort of miss out you'll get the gist as we go along so again make sure that this one lines up at the top the little notches at the top there because that's where the uh, the beams are going to go in there. Right, once those pieces have dried, we uh, we need to assemble this. Now, I'll start with the long side uh, because it fits exactly. Uh, you can see from end to end, there's no sort of overhang. 
So uh, that's probably the best place to start. And you can have it left or right um, handed windows, uh, all the pieces sort of mix and match uh, from side to side. So a little bit of rocket glue along the bottom. And we'll just use the cocktail stick just to smooth it in a little bit. It's a bit tight there. And then that's going to pop in there nice and square. Now I would suggest you put all the four sides on in a fairly sort of rapid succession because the rocket glue will set fairly quickly. But um, if you're quick enough, which uh, it's not that you know that quick to be fair, um, you can uh, you can make some final adjustments on the uh, when the final piece goes in. And then the wall uh, with the door in, we'll, uh, we'll fit that one next. Just a little bit along the uh, the bottom, Oops. and uh, and the edge that's going to butt up to the uh, to that wall that's already there. I suppose on the inside is the best place to put that. And that should be nice, uh, sort of snug fit around the step that's uh, that's popping out there. You can see. Now this piece is uh, thinner than the rest. Now we've only got two of the sort of narrow applies, um, and you'll see. Uh, well, you probably worked it out anyway, but you'll see in a moment uh, why that is. So we're going to fit this one in, and that should just sort of clip into place. Uh, because the rocket glue isn't set on the other side it should just allow us just a bit of uh, movement and if you look at this closely down the bottom there's a gap and that's where the window section is going to slide in in a moment and here is the window part if we're going to take these away and paint these soon but just give you an, an idea what we'll do is we'll just we're going to slide that in there oops, and that will glue into place uh, gives us the same thickness walls and then the window is kind of in the right um, plane in that wall so uh, we've given them a paint this has just had a um, uh, just a uh, primer uh, primer gray it's kind of the right color uh, it's a good base to start from and then the windows and, and the doors had um, just a shade of green for this particular one you can choose whatever color you you want to some rocket glue on the inside and then that should just slot into there pop down into the bottom and that's it we're done and then for the door now the door is um, it's pretty much the, the right size so there's not much movement around that not much gap you could uh, just glue it into place if you choose um, but I've decided that I'd rather use uh, just a piece of backing on the uh, on the back to make up um, just hold it in place and if you want your door open you could use a piece of thin card uh, and then sort of bend it like a hinge and then you could have the door open or you could just glue it into place in an open position And we'll pop those two bits on and just give that a minute to dry. And then when it is dry, a little dab of glue on either end. And then we'll just chop it into place. The next thing is to fit the uh, the beams for the roof. Now this particular kit has got four um, four beams. Um, if you go for one of the different kits that's got more uh, more window panes or a longer side, 
you may have uh, sort of five or six of them. So the notches here are where the uh, the two uh, beams in the centre will fit. I think that's uh, quite apparent anyway. I'm going to use a cocktail stick just so we can get our glue in there. Now the way that I've found easiest to fit these is to just um, kind of get these into position just to get them in just a little bit and it just as it bites rather than trying to force it down because you, you do run the risk of just um, using so much pressure on one of the walls that you just push the wall off it's pushing it in from the bottom and uh, it, they seem to go in uh, quite cleanly that way the, uh, the next beam we will uh, do exactly the same now you'll notice on the end of the beam they're, they're shaped and it's the shape part that overhangs um, outside of the, the wall um, so once you see this up close it'll make uh, hopefully perfect sense so again just pop it in from the bottom it gives you nice pressure and uh, they're nice and level then And then at the ends are a little bit simpler. Um, there's just a, a space. The uh, the end walls are slightly lower to accommodate the depth of the uh, of the beam. Now we've chosen not to decorate the inside of our hut. Uh, obviously you uh, you can if uh, if it's going to be visible. Maybe add in lights and so on, which are really nice. Um, if anybody uh, has got any images from their layout of uh, of their plate layers hut, just uh, tag us on Instagram. Uh, just so we can see what you've been up to it's always nice to see uh, some of the things that we make uh, being used in uh, other people's layouts so the roof section is made up of two parts again there's a, a two mil mdf part and a one mil overlay uh, and you the overlay is one millimeter bigger in uh, each direction So all we need to do is just to uh, glue that one into place. And just make sure you leave that one millimeter um, sort of overhang all the way around. There's no top or bottom to the uh, to the thicker piece. The, uh, the one millimeter piece, the thinner piece, does have some etchings for some uh, sort of slab effect. And then when the uh, when we glue this into place, you'll see those uh, those there's some black marks. They're actually cuts on the two millimeter piece. They just line up with the beams, um, and they will show as uh, hopefully as some uh, sort of marks for slabs where the uh, where they've used individual pieces on the roof. probably easier to do it this way then you can see how to align it so once that's uh, done and set the final part uh, of the assembly is for the uh, the chimney which is resin printed and um, the ones I've made so far I've put this in the uh, right in the center of the rear wall but you could obviously have it in the corner or anywhere else you choose or, or not at all it's just a very simple uh, sort of style of uh, chimney. I don't think they were particularly lavish. We fixed that one on with super glue, as you uh, you probably noticed. So that's that particularly uh, finished. Just need to now paint in the roof. Now, um, if you've got an airbrush or you're using a paintbrush, you don't need to. Uh, to mask we, we use an aerosol can of our car primer so we're going to just quickly mask um, particularly around the, the doors and the windows we just want to cover those up out of the way just so we don't get any more paint on those and we'll take that away and give that a couple of coats of our uh, of our primer So once that's uh, that's dry, 
<clears throat> let's just uh, unmask that and um, and you could really leave it there um, if that's what you choose to do uh, but we're going to do a bit more work on this um, maybe a little bit of weathering well definitely a bit of weathering um, there won't be balance yard I think if we didn't do any weathering so uh, let's crack on with that so we're going to paint in some uh, different coloured uh, slabs or the slats that they use and because this is MDF and we only use a single um, coat of um, primer it's still fairly porous so we're going to make up um, like a wash basically so we're using model air which is already thinned down as it uh, as it comes from the bottle but we're going to add a touch of uh, thinners um, probably about the same amount again so uh, just a drop or two in each one And uh, then we can paint these on. Now the uh, the effects may look um, a bit too uh, well, not enough, not subtle enough, basically. Once we start, but uh, it does soak in because it's uh, so it's still porous. So we'll just try and um, choose some sort of random, random slabs. It's very difficult to uh, to be random. It's not in human nature to be random. We like order and structure. So the colour we're using there, by the way, is uh, Vallejo cement. That's the lighter one. It's kind of a light greeny, grey colour. Um, but it's a very dilute so you can see it's already sort of soaking away but it'll be enough just to uh, just to give the effect of the slabs all being slightly different see the effect there hopefully and then we're going to use the darker color and this is just a uh, just a darker gray probably a little bit too uh, too dark let's just thin it down a little bit more Need to do the rest of the, uh, the walls, but I'll uh, I'll do them in a moment. Um, the slabs at the top, you can do the same sort of thing with those if you uh, if you choose to. So uh, just uh, again being fairly random, you can use different colours. Um, some uh, some sort of very dilute browns would uh, would work, and also uh, like a white in a wash. Uh, for older concrete that's kind of a bit dusty would uh, would also work. You don't have to limit yourself to just one colour on each slab. You can use uh, a couple of colours uh, that you've already got in your palette and just sort of mix them around a little bit. So just use darker grey on the uh, on the roof and then black on the chimney. And we'll. Uh, all that about dry a little bit more. It looks a bit patchy at the moment, but uh, don't worry about that. We'll uh, we'll cover that in a second. So to add some uh, some subtle sort of shades on, we've got uh, this black 
um, model air, which we've thinned down. And we'll turn the pressure on the airbrush down a, a little bit. Now, if you've got a brush that's got the adjustment, the stop on the end, you can uh, sort of screw that down a bit, tighten it in, and then it just limits the amount of um, how far down you can press the, uh, the trigger. And uh, then you just get a very light um, uh, spray. You can come out, it's quite subtle there. And that's all we're trying to achieve is uh, either like a dirty wash or maybe even a shadow and just uh, just adjust it as you go if you need a bit more then just uh, back it off a little bit undo the screw or if it's too much then you can tighten it down a little bit I think we just uh, gone down just a little bit more just so it's a little bit less you can do streaks or you can just um, just if it's a particular patch you just want to add a a darker patch to or a shade then uh, then this is good for that you can use different colors mix and match uh, even uh, white if you use white in combination with the black uh, and it gets a nice sort of streaking pattern on uh, on some models too and we just do a little bit just at the bottom just to uh, just to make it look a bit, a little bit dirty. There we go. So I just opened it up to get a bit more pressure to come through, and then we can see it working now. And the same. Uh, on the roof and we just play around a bit more around the chimney um, for that for like a smoke effect so for our door and uh, and the window we'll um, just add um, just a sort of manual chipping effect in and we're just going to touch it. This is just uh, a neutral grey, um, or you could use a wood colour, or, or um, even like a white if the door was previously white and you want to simulate a, a sort of chips paint effect. But we're just using grey um, where the paint's flaked off, and uh, and the wood underneath has uh, gone grey due to the uh, the elements and the weathering and the age and so on. And finally, for some uh, some weathering powders, we're going to use predominantly that uh, the one in the middle, which is uh, Humbrol Dark Earth. Um, if you're one of our smaller smaller brushes, we don't want to put on too much. This is just um, to give the effect of um, sort of mud splattered up the side from when it's rained and that sort of thing. And that one is that's also Humbrol. That's um, chrome oxide which is that bright green and I, I tend to mix that in with the, the um, with the dark earth otherwise the green is uh, much too vivid it just gives that browny green type of effect if we mix the two together and I'm using just a little tiny bit uh, on each time um, it's easy to uh, to add more it's uh, probably impossible to take it off so uh, just a little bit at a time and just layer it up until you get the effect that you like. We need to do the rest of the walls. I'll, uh, I'll come back to those in a moment. But let's do uh, some work on the, uh, on the roof. Now um, that's probably a little bit, bit too much rust but anyway we'll, uh, we'll wash some of that off in a moment. So 
I'm not sure what that chimney would have been made of if anybody does actually know whether it's brick or uh, or some sort of steel then uh, then do let me know and uh, I can uh, modify any future uh, um, painting schemes so we use the dark earth on the uh, on the roof we're just going to um, be fairly sort of uh, random with this and then with our thinner so you can use water or uh, any um, if you've got a fixer or medium for your uh, weathering powder you can use that as well and this is just to create uh, a watered um, sort of effect where the rain is sat on the top on the roof and um, it will push the um, the powders out in a particular nice sort of soft organic pattern and hopefully uh, leave them dry marks so here's one that we prepared earlier hope this guide has been of uh, of some sort of use and um, thanks again for joining us on Bunter's Yard and we'll see you next time bye for now Thank you.